Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Well, I, you know, it just it astounds me, you know, in this time when, you know, we have this horrific, you know, uh, damage occurring to our cities and, you know, yeah. these uh, inner cities with lots of poor people in them, too. And, and you're just destroying the storefronts and the way people are going to make their living. Uh, you just And then to say that, yeah. hey... It, nothing says this has to be peaceful. <laughs> just, oh it's, my just, God. it's just the unbelievable hypocrisy involved in all of this, you know. Okay? Yeah, yeah. All of these people love to say, oh, they want to help the poor, they want to protect the poor. They love to tell us that. Oh, they're so moral and they, they, they're better than the rest of us for, for, for when we disagree with them. But they're talking about this nonsense, but let someone come at them. Let someone come at them, try to destroy their home or attack their family and that kind of stuff. They'll forget all of the high mighty nonsense they speak on the airwaves, and they would pr probably pick up a gun to defend themselves, which they should. But don't give us know, the hypocrisy. You know, we had a uh, there was an ESPN reporter, I think, and yeah. he was actually yeah he was, he was saying hey burn it all down, you know, and then when it got close to his neighborhoods, oh my God, they're coming over the walls. <laughs> yeah. His gated, he was sitting in his gated community, literally yeah. his gated community, saying, I'll burn it all down. And they came to his gated community, started trying to break over the walls, and he called the police yeah. and said, oh, thanks the police for coming in and pushing them off and all this stuff. Yeah. You yeah. sorry sack of yeah. crap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it would have been nice if J.R. Smith wow. would have shown up at his house. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Well, actually, J.R. Smith, actually, I did see that. J.R. Smith wasn't actually protesting. He was just kind of hanging out. He looked out his window, and he saw someone breaking into his car, and so he ran out and beat the crap out of the guy. Yeah. J.R. Smith wow. wasn't actually at the, wasn't even at the protest. No, he was in the protest. Yeah, he, he said he was inside. He was inside someplace, and he came out. He came outside. He saw someone walk, beating his car, and so he went up and beat up the guy. But that was some little white kid, probably some 15-year-old kid. He's mad at his parents, and so he's going to go out and beat stuff up because he's because he can. Yeah. But you, you know what's funny though is that you know they, this is what you know if you if you're a law-abiding citizen you see this happening and you're so discouraged to even consider doing this and you know what J.R. Smith did you go out there and do something like that and you may find out you're the one who's going to jail and not being released with the no bail. Yeah. <laughs> well, J.R. Smith has got money to, to pay the bail, so he doesn't have to care. He's got the lawyers yeah. and the bail money. And, oh yeah, yeah man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He, so, he, 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 regardless whether you have to pay the bill or not, he's he gonna be out. Regardless. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think they did anything to him. I don't think they're gonna do anything to him. So yeah, they'll, they'll leave it alone. We got other problems to worry about. Some guy beating up some guy who's busting cars. You know, I just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, thank you for stopping a looter. I was watching the stream live streams of our local of the local protests, and they have uh, the B pays some kids. Uh, not kids. They're I guess late twenties, but a local production company. And they drive around and just kind of filming what's going on. And you watch these people, these protesters were blocking, trying to stop these looters. But, you know, these looters are organized and the protesters weren't. So, and I hope that, you know, what Tim says that, you know, there's got intelligence that it's going to be violence this, this tomorrow. I hope that's, you know. Yeah, I'm glad, buddy. Yeah. I, I hope I, that's overprotective because, yeah. because there are a bunch of groups causing chaos and it's, and it's, it's yeah. disturbing. Yeah, well, well, human, human tragedy upon human tragedy upon you know generations of human tragedy. At some point, we have to say enough is enough. Well, you know, every That's now and then you see a story out there that really kind of you know, helps to confirm your you know thoughts and you know human decency. And I, I, I saw this one video where a gal had uh, uh, you know she she was taking a brick back to the people who were handing them out and she's saying what the hell are you doing handing yes. these out to, you know you know there's these white guys in this car white gal i guess and they're handing bricks to these black men in the protest and she's like what the what the hell are you doing you know you're going to get somebody killed you know and and it's all being taped and i yeah. i just thought you know well you know here's a hero and here's a monster you know and i mean yeah. it's just in the same story and it's just uh, gosh yeah. i mean yeah, and you watch, and who are these people driving around in these? That was like a Mercedes or something driving around handing out freaking bricks. I, what the fuck is that? <laughs> now that's a situation where uh, the bricks being thrown at the Mercedes handing out the bricks would be poetic justice, in yeah. my opinion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. I wonder if it was that ESPN reporter driving that car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, brother. I unfortunately, this, this is the problem. 
<laughs> well, I was going to say, unfortunately, she didn't hand back the brick with the same intent that it was given to her. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, exactly. But, you know, she's a more of a she's more human than they are, and that's exactly. that, and I think that's what we can all look. Even in all the chaos, she had every reason to throw that brick at one of their heads, and she did. Yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, so who's behind? the people in the Mercedes handing out the bricks. Okay. So where's the money coming from that's buying the bricks? That's, yeah. you know, what's going on? This is, and I don't really know. I'm not saying I know because I don't. But, well, I think uh, there's, a couple, I think it depends which city you're in, which groups are doing it. And then there's a couple cities like Dallas. You've got two different groups kind of playing, playing around. I saw two different groups out there. And I think one group was just majorly teenagers. And I think one group was Antifa members from the Bay Area came up here just to, because they don't do in their own town. They drive out of town and then go back home. So on and, Facebook, my liberal friends are blaming cons conservative boogaloo boy groups of, um, of uh, white uh, supremacists. And there are some my, of those out there too. Okay. And my uh, conservative friends are blaming antifa or is and it both are antifa true. yeah but where's the accent yeah is it mm -hmm. on the t or the fa i have no idea but i get i get the point mm. yeah so so everybody you know of course you can't well you can't both come up true. with solid evidence one way or another who yeah. who's doing this and if it's both maybe it is maybe james is right maybe it's both i don't know well yeah i, well, I really think it's but it maybe even have more than just two groups there may be anybody yeah. who's got anybody who's got an agenda right now is going to go out and try and, and play in there. Just if you just want chaos, you exactly. just cause chaos. Exactly. That was an yeah. opportunity. Everybody, everybody is taking advantage of this situation. Whether it's Antifa, whether it's um, white supremacists, or whether whoever, everybody's yeah. out there taking advantage of the situation right now. And yeah. everybody have forgotten, or well, not everybody, but most people have forgotten what this what caused this thing to start which was mm -hmm. justice for george floyd that is what this was about okay? right yeah. well, but exactly. everybody now everybody have now probably forgotten what 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 what's, what started this thing it's yeah. not justice for george floyd it's denied justice for literally generations yeah and, and george floyd is just the the latest symbol of that but it's literally it's this kind of anger this kind of frustration doesn't happen over one thing it's it's literally generations we've watched it my whole entire life and and i'm only 50. and so this is we're talking about generational injustices and people have been giving a lot of lip service a lot of lip service they, they do as the minimal change they can do to get people to shut up and vote for them and nothing fundamentally changes we have these police we have literally passed a thousand laws last year in california how many of those laws are ultimately enforced by a police officer yeah. well if we don't change what we ask them to do we're not going to change anything well, you know, I have a little bit of a problem with this general, this generational transfer of, of guilt. Okay. I really have a little problem with that. Okay. I do not hold anybody. If, if for instance, something is done to me by a white person, I am not going to hold Tim and Jason responsible for that. Okay. That is racism. Okay. That is racism, plain and simple. No, no. So I, I don't think it's guilt, uh, Leon. I don't think it's guilt. Let me, let me, let me, let me make my point. Let me make my point. Okay. Dr. Martin Luther King told us we should judge by the content of character. We should judge by the color of conduct, not by the hue of your skin or the content of your melanin. I don't want to do that. I don't want to live in that world. I want to live in that world where if I am going to be friends with with Jason or with Tim or with you, I'm going to do that based upon your conduct with me. Nothing more. I don't believe in this generational stuff. I don't. I'm sorry. No, I don't think it's. I don't see. I don't think it's guilt. I think it's pain. It's generational pain that that get, the pain gets transferred because you can't really help it. As you raise your child, as I raise my child, I transfer the pain I have experienced through anxiety disorder. I can't help it because that's how I interpret the world, and so that generational pain goes on. And when that generational pain refuses to get heard, when every time something happens, the conversation gets stopped and becomes political divided, that pain never gets fully gets expressed. And if people don't get heard, they can't move past the pain. This yeah, is a James. fundamental psychological concept. And and so if we have to let people get heard. I was uh, talking on my live stream last night that if you have the urge to say all lives matter, I get it. But the best thing to do is shut up and listen to the people speak because then they can 
be heard. And once they are heard, we can start having these difficult conversations like you want to have, Leon. Like, it's not about race. It's it's about your individual behavior. But they can't get to that conversation as long as they're still feeling pain. But James, I, I think one of the problems, though, that we also have is that I, I think we have an um, entertainment industry that's that's built on the pain porn, I guess you might say, yeah. you know, I mean, upon, you know, I mean, and so it's 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 amplifying it beyond maybe what it naturally would be, which is almost like putting it on steroids. Well, and so, yeah. so that's part of the part of the problem, I think. The too. media, the 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 news, the politicians, all they all deliberately make it worse because it serves their purpose. The news media that's gets true. more views. The that's politicians. True. The politicians get more votes, they get more divided, they get more votes, they get more money, right? The media likes to sell movies. They don't give a crap what they do to society. They just want to sell movies, right? It's not really their job to, to, to society. It's society's job to say, no, I'm not watching that crap, but we don't. So in a sense, the society needs to take all of us, every single one of us, regardless of what color we are, regardless of what gender we are, regardless of our sexual pers perspectives, we need to take a hard look in the mirror and say, what can I do to make my community a little bit better? Yeah. But 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 the point is though, we accept racism from certain people and we don't accept it from others. Look for just recently, Joe Biden was on a was on the Breakfast Club, a, a, a national uh, radio, uh, radio show, and he said that unless I'm paraphrasing his words here, unless you unless you 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 vote for me or unless you support me, you ain't black. Imagine Joe Biden could tell me I'm black or not. Joe Biden could tell me this. Imagine this. Yeah. Previously, I think it was in 2012, he was talking to a black audience. He said, oh, they're going to unchain Wall Street. What are they going to do? They're going to put you back in chains. And he was talking to a predominantly black audience. Yeah, and those people no. should have walked out the door. That's what I mean. They should have said, hey. But they didn't. You see, yeah, this is the point. We accept, we accept racism from certain people, and we don't accept it from others. Could yeah. you imagine a Republican had said something what Joe Biden just said about you ain't black? A Republican had said that, or conservative had said that. He yeah. he would not be in the campaign right now, I'll tell you that. But Joe Biden is still is, and he's wonderful, and he's great, and he's going to save this country. He's going to save us. Yeah, that's how toxic our politics have become. Our politics are so toxic that, that people cannot actually see that what they're doing is harming themselves. Because well, the other guy, because they're so afraid that those other people are worse, that they can't look into a different direction. It's like, yeah. well, I can't, I can't leave the Democrats because the Republicans are worse. Maybe they are, but you can still leave the damn Democrats. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think so much of this too. Just, it's terrible. I mean, it's a little bit of a tangent, but it all comes down to you know, sort of the the terrible job we're doing with our public education. Because if we were doing a better job with public education everybody be doing better and a lot of these things would just get better if everybody's doing better you know? it's true <laughs> okay oh, valid point i take that yes yeah, take and if that. everybody's yeah. doing better you have more time to focus on making your communities better but if all you're doing is scratching out at a subsistence living you don't have time to make your community better and so yeah it, it's and smarter people people with more knowledge you know do better in life it is just even if it's not you want to judge it by money you're just do better you're happier in life the more knowledge you have because not everybody needs money to be happy, but the more knowledge you have, the happier you are in life. And so we just do a really crappy job about getting people the knowledge they need to be the type of person they want to be. Mm. And so they end up being, they end up filling it with stuff that's not relevant. And then at 40 years old, they go, crap, what have I done with my life? And they try to rebuild it then. And it's, you know, and it's a very hard road to do. We're setting up our generations for failure and it's, it's heartbreaking. Reminds oh, me that of that. Part, yeah. That oh, part is true. Yeah. But I like, we can sit here, me and Leon, we can sit here, we can have these, these are difficult discussions, but they have to be had. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. If we just and sit here and agree all the time and say, oh yeah, it's okay, but we go home and yeah. turn off the cameras and then we say, oh, that guy's crazy. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. solve anything. We have, sure. to, we have to work uh, these things out. Yeah, I'm sure a few people, uh, people probably say that about me after the cameras are turned off, which is fine. But, yeah, but we, you know, no one is saying about me, Leon. So it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Well, you know, the point is, though, though. But on a serious note, though, we always hear this talk. We have to have an honest discussion of race. We always hear that we have to have an honest discussion about race and racism in America. Indeed, we need it. But let's have it and let it be honest. 
Yeah. Which means, mm-hmm. you know, this, this is part of the problem. It's that, you know, the, the, the main two parties have essentially got a tribal message on this. And that's why you can't have an honest discussion because, you know, it, you, you've got to have the same talking points. I mean, you know, you can see it on all the news networks and everything else. Yeah. You know, if, if, if you're the blue network, everybody's got the same talking points. And if you're the yeah. red network, you know, it's it's probably similar. There's just not as many red networks. But but if you're talking about podcasts, then, of course, yeah, all the red networks all have the same stuff going on as well, too. Sure, so, I mean, sure, it's just sure. you've got these tribal conversations and that's why they're not. We can't have an honest conversation because, you know, it's just complete demonization of the other side. And, you know, uh, you know, step onto Team Purple and maybe we can <laughs> you know, get some better conversation. That's why we're here, right? That's why we do these. So we can have the honest conversation other people are afraid to have. Yeah, but that's the whole point. The, 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 problem, the problem begins when it is true at one time there were a lot of injustices done to American Indians and a lot of injustices done to blacks. There's no doubt about that. We, we, can, we there's no, I don't think there's anybody that, 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 that disagrees with that. Where the problem start is that, can we say that whites of today, I mean, I'm talking about our contemporaries, are they responsible for the conduct of the ancestors? This is where the problem begin. And this is where this conversation always goes wrong who we want to blame for what is going on. Well, then that, 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 here's the problem with the pain porn and everything else is because it, literally the argument you just made, Leon, that goes back all the way to the beginning of time. So it's like, where do you, where do you stop it? But in this Good country, point. we have a narrative because of the pain porn that only deals with a very specific time frame and a very specific group of people. Yes. So, I mean, this is part of the issue is that we're just magnifying on this instead of seeing that, look, this is an endemic problem to humanity. I mean, this has been happening everywhere around the world. People have been victimizing each other based upon their tribal groups since since the end of time. I mean, or beginning beginning time. Time. Yeah. Yeah. hopefully not till the end of time. Hopefully yeah. we can change that here. <laughs> yeah, we'd, we'd hope so. We'd hope so. We'd hope so. Yeah. Oh. I, I have to uh, say something uh, honest. Uh, I have to get ready to go to work. So I'm have to <laughs> I've got to yeah. drink yeah. on a few minutes myself. So I, 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 I go the All right, we, yeah. I've got to get out of here. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I call that honest, man. I might be this honest. You got to get ready to go to work, man. Come on, man. I'm, I'm retired, yeah. and he's talking to me like that. No, hey, go, don't you lay like Amazon stuff around? We need Tim flying out there. He, we need to get my stuff. That's delivered. right. Yeah, <laughs> you, watch, you watch your Amazon stuff and your little flowers and yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. So, all right, so right, we're going to get out of here. I'm going to hit this end of broadcast button. Uh, you got anything to end, Jason? You're the technical oh, host. Oh, thanks, I'm so, such a habit of that now. Well, thanks for jumping in, James. Uh, it's uh, great to have you in here on the overtime. So. <laughs> and and good luck on the yeah. campaign. Too. They are always working. Yeah. We're good luck, trying hard. Yes. yes. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, everybody, thank for you. joining all us. Right. Take care, guys. Thank you.